This has to be one of the best GNXs I've ever seen. 107 miles from new. The car is just brand new, absolutely perfect. Without a doubt, these GNXs were the top muscle car of the 1980s. So when you hear Grand National, different people think of different things. You know, a lot of guys in North America, they think of the NASCAR series, the Grand National series. And that's what really led to these cars becoming such a success. Daryl Waltrip, you know, winning the championship in a Regal in 81 and 82. The Daytona 500 in 82 was when they released the Grand National. Buick was having so much NASCAR success, they wanted to capitalize on the street. The term, win on Sunday, sell on Monday, they really wanted to capitalize on that. So in 82, they released the Grand National. The car wasn't extraordinary, you know, compared to the Regal, it certainly looked tougher, but that was the jumping off point which would eventually lead to this 1987 GNX. As the 80s progressed, these V6 turbos got quicker and quicker over the course of the decade. Buick wanted to make them look tougher and they wanted to make them quicker. By 1984, these cars were 200 horsepower. By 1986, they were 235 horsepower. In 86, these cars were quicker than the Corvettes, the Camaros, the Mustangs, and they certainly didn't have that sports car look. These things were sleepers. So by 86, they had really accomplished what they set out to do. So I guess Buick decided they just wanted to whoop everyone's butt for one last year and then shut the whole program down. So they decided they were gonna build the GNX, the Grand National Experimental. They took 547 cars, they gave it some special GNX interior, and then they shipped them off to McLaren to get hot rodded. So let's take a look under the hood, show you guys some of the things that McLaren decided to do. So obviously the turbochargers on the GNXs, they were branded GNX. So McLaren decided they were gonna go with a bigger turbocharger with a ceramic impeller. They were gonna go with a bigger intercooler. They changed the ECU. And then McLaren looked at the suspension, really set up the car as they would a race car to really improve the handling on these things. And they gave the car bigger exhaust. So with all those changes, the car shook out to what was reportedly 276 horsepower and 360 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if you know about these cars, you know that the story is these numbers were underreported. And it came down the pipe that no GM car could outperform a Corvette on paper. These things certainly outperformed them on the quarter mile, but as far as the official numbers go, they couldn't beat the Corvette. So they took these cars to the track and the quarter mile test runs, they were doing 12.7 seconds at 113 miles an hour. That all depends on who you are, if that sounds fast or not. But you gotta remember, so in 1986 with the Grand National, that was the fastest American production car built. In 1987, the GNX, this thing being a lot faster, that's near the top of production cars, period, for a quarter mile run. That's F40 fast, that's Quintage fast. Could you imagine being Lamborghini or Ferrari hearing that news that a Buick is just as fast as your top supercars? So these things came with the 16 inch alloy wheels with the Gator back Goodyears on it. And then the GNXs, they had these vents here for the engine compartment, the idea being to dump some of the heat out of the engine bay. Now naturally on a car that's, you know, 100 miles or brand new, everyone's got to have the window sticker. And it's interesting, you look at the window sticker on one of these cars, 17,000, almost $18,000 new for a Grand National and the GNX option is $10,995, almost $11,000 for the GNX option. These cars were just under 30 grand new. When you think of these cars, it really was the perfect storm when they were coming out. One year of production, super rare car, only 547 of these things built. The performance was astronomical, almost second to none. So a lot of these cars, they were kept in the wrapper, just like this car. I think it was one of the first, you know, I wasn't around when these cars came out, but in my eyes, it's really one of the first cars where guys bought them with the intention of keeping them sealed in the wrapper as a real investment as a muscle car. So the guy who bought this thing new in Memphis, Tennessee, he decided he was gonna keep it in the wrapper. So he kept everything. He kept the bill of sale, kept all the books and records. He even kept the jacket that came with it. 
So here's the jacket. I've never seen one of these things before. GNX Buick. Still got the original bag sealed up. I think I should try it on. I'm just kidding. My dad would kill me. Oh, that's, I've never seen one of these before. So here we go, limited edition, 547 edition. This is number 224. So the book is numbered to the car. Oh, I guess it just goes through the history, eh, of the uh, Buick's racing heritage. So we got here, yeah, just all the books and records, everything in perfectly new condition here. Owner's manual, the GNX owner's manual. Everything you could ask for in one of these cars. I guess one of the advantages to having one of these cars over, say, a Corvette in the day is, man, you could put two hockey bags in here or the entire group set of golf clubs. The first thing you notice as you go to get in this thing is just how heavy the door is. I think these cars could have gone a lot faster if they just paid a little bit more attention to details like weight. It really is a good looking cluster here. You've got the beautiful Stuart Warner gauges here. You've got your turbo gauge. You've got the emblem here. You've got your turbo 3.8 liter. And then on the GNX's over here, you've got GNX and then the number 224. Obviously a four speed transmission. And then a bunch of power options. You've got power windows, you've got power locks. And then the driver's seat, you've got a six way adjustable power seat. You should be able to find a comfy position in this car. So, do you need a car like this? No, no one needs a 1987, 100 miles from new original GNX. But do you want a car like this? Do you want a super collectible, American-made muscle car that was just as fast as the Ferrari F40 and the Lamborghini Countach the year it came out? Yeah, you want a 1987 GNX just like this.